You could come stay in my home for the summer and come up with something so you can make some money for yourself when you move out so you don't have to go back home to Boston. That was my well, only- Like Boston's such a bad thing. Where are you yeah. from? The, right. What part of New York City are you from that you're both poo-pooing Boston like this? This is the plaintiff, Daniel Malbert. He says he was hired by the defendant to help design websites, and he received only two-thirds of the money he was promised. The defendant has no right stiffing him on this money that he's earned, and he's here in the name of justice, seeking the $2,400 he's still owed. This is the defendant, Maksud Agajani. He says he took this down and out old friend in, gave him free housing and helped him get on his feet. He even gave him a letter stating he was gonna be working for him so he could show it to landlords as proof of income so he could rent his own place. Bottom line, he was very generous to this guy who as it turns out is a nasty person who he now wants nothing to do with and who is owed absolutely nothing. He's accused of going back on his word. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. You see it? Come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Okay, in. Mr. Malbert, you are suing Mr. Agajani and his company, Tracks New York City, yep. for $2,400 that you say is owed to you and they have not paid. Can you tell me what's going on? Correct. Um, I've known the client for some years, um, or the defendant. He was a client of mine. I developed a website for him along with other collaterals for his company. Um, I say ending of June last year, I had rock bottom, came back from Cuba, and was no longer employed at the company that I was working with. Uh, the defendant offered me housing and a situation where I would work on a big project for him for $10,000 if I stayed in the state of New York. Um, honestly, at that point, I was willing to go back home. Where's I, home? Boston. I'm from Boston. Um, and start all over from scratch. The only reason why I stayed was because I was offered. What is it you do? I'm, I'm an interactive designer. I design websites, uh, CD covers, mixtape covers for entertainment, uh, posters, jewelry. So when you say he offered you housing, the housing was where? Like what? It was it was in his uh, residential apartment. In his home. Correct. So you were living together. Correct. Okay. And how long were you living there? For. I say about five months. And then where did you go? I, I moved to my own residence. When did you move into the apartment? Uh, or the house? Is it a house? June. Is it a house? Apartment? And it's a bedroom apartment in Queens. Okay. And were you living there too? Yes. Okay. So he, he, you moved in in June? Correct. And, and when did June. you move out? December. Okay. And, and then did December. you keep working with him after December? No. I was literally trying to find more employment and working with other clients at that point. Okay, so um, when did you stop working for him? Um, abruptly, was it before or after you moved out? It was, it was before I moved out because abruptly we got in a, a confrontation. He asked me to do some research for marketing. I then gave him an idea. He then took it and implemented the idea without compensating me or, or acknowledging that it was my idea. It was an abrupt, ugly argument. And literally, like, I didn't want to do free work anymore. All right, so you end up, though, but you're suing here today for uh, app design. Correct. Can you share the name of it? It, it was just a, at this point, there wasn't an even an even name for it. Okay. It was an app for his company to entertain his consumer um, give him the education that he was providing, the content with uh, the videos that he was providing. It was going to update on its own, have music and everything, just an entertainment app as you would, like be on a train or anything. How just, far did you get on that? It was complete. Okay. You, according to you, you were supposed to be paid three payments of 1650 Correct. And that you was, were paid was, two, but not the third. 
to be honest with you, it was a $10,000 agreement. I was paid $5,000 up front, and then the, the rest of the remaining was supposed to be split up into three parts. Okay. So I got two of the three parts, and then another argument came, and then... So you're missing, according to you, one of the three Correct. parts, which amounts to 1650 Correct. When we went into the agreement, I was supposed to be working on a big project. The big project I took on, and I developed the app on my own. I, I took it on on my own as this is the big project that, and he was happy What do you mean by it. you took it on on your own? He didn't ask you for that? No, nah, he, he literally told me that I should work on a big project. Literally, he wasn't defining- Let me return in a second. And, so, uh, so, and, and no guidance about what the big project should be? Still to this what day- What do you think, like you're a, living together and he's not saying, hey, what are you doing? They, like, he doesn't communicate well. So, well, again. Neither do you. If neither one of you are, you're I'm living willing, in the I'm same space. Are you sharing a kitchen? I'm willing to take are that. Are you sharing a kitchen? Yes. I, you're sharing a kitchen. Do you talk? I'm willing to accept that. However, it's I wasn't. It's bizarre. What, according to you, what's going on? Because well, I do see that you did, in fact, make payments of $1,650. Well, like he said, he hit rock bottom, and he called me in a state of distress. His previous roommate was sleepwalking into his room. And he needed a place to stay, or he didn't need a place to stay. He said he was going back to Boston, and he can't take this anymore. He has to do this all over again. I said, listen, I have an extra bedroom I was running an Airbnb out of. It's a nice bedroom, fully furnished. You could come stay in my home for the summer and come up with something so you can make some money for yourself when you move out so you don't have to go back home to Boston. That was my <laughs> well, only- Like, Boston's such a bad thing. Where are you from? The, right. What part of New York City are you from that you're both poo-pooing Boston like well, this? Well, you know, he's what in New part? York. Yeah, I'm my in Queens. Boston viewers want to know. What part of New Queens, York City? New York. You're from Queens. Queens. Park, All right, so excuse me. I was born in Queens, and I'm here to tell you that Boston is really nice. It's you know? not bad. Um, it's not better than Queens, though. <laughs> I gave him the space. He spent the whole summer not working on any big project. He spent oh, this whole summer. Did you mention anything to him? I mentioned it several times. What'd you it's say? I said, listen, let's work on something. You're not working on anything. He was DJing the whole summer, relaxing, no rent to pay. He's living in my home for well, free. Well, that was your decision. That's true. That was my decision. Right. And then I sat there and, and I gave him a small project. He'd make Why did you do all this, by the because way? Because I wanted to help him. He's No, no, it's not because you're a great humanitarian. He must have some talent that you found uh, to be... Yeah. Absolutely, he has incredible talents that he, I was hoping he could realize and capitalize for okay, himself. Okay, so why don't you just give him the project that you want him to do instead of, he, he was instead going, of telling him, come up with something fabulous, um, you know, like. Well, you know, that was the terms that I came up with for him. So come up with something fabulous? Feet, okay. Rather than going back home and going, uh, you know, What away, kind of business say, do you have? Jewelry business. Okay, and uh, as I understand it, you're pretty successful. I'm not bad, I'm doing okay. You're doing okay for a yeah. boy from Queens. Yeah. Um, because I read some press about the people who buy your jewelry. Yeah. And you got some big names there. Yeah, we work hard and we, we run a business and when I get a chance to work with somebody, I will. If I have an extra room, I have no problem. I live by myself and I wanna help somebody out and that's okay. the God's honest truth. And, okay, but then, uh, so why did you not pay him the remaining 1,650? Towards the end of the summer, he didn't accomplish anything to make money to get on his feet. I told him, you have until the end of the year, okay? Until January 1st to do something. Okay, but so he says he did. He came up with an app that your your consumers yeah. could kind yeah. of, you know, it's really advertising. Whatever it is that right. he said and he was so going to do. Right, and so how did that go? So I said, fine, if this is what it's going to take, here's $5,000 as a deposit, and I have a text message correspondence with him right. regarding that, if you'd like to see it. No, I believe you. Okay. He says you paid him that. Okay, I gave him $5,000 towards the end of the year. I didn't want this application. Oh, I yeah, then I do want to see it. What date was that? December 20th. Yeah, let me see your text. Actually, I prefer to see text inside the phone. Do you have it in the phone? Yes, I, like, I do. I like to see what comes after and before. Sure, absolutely. I love text messaging. <laughs> <laughs> Say it, forget it, write it, regret it. I can move you up to 5K for the total when you pick it up. And then another 5K when the app is launched and it's ready to go. But you've got to give me some time for that because I don't even have an application. I never use this. Please check, give me some time for the other 5K at least some months. Okay, and that was in December. Please check your email for the logo, he says. I'm also in need of a written letter stating that the remaining 5K will be in my hands on whatever date. Very important for housing. And you say, okay. And he puts clappy hands, I think. I don't know, what, what are those hands? Hands up. Hands up. Like, a, touchdown. Touchdown. All right. Like, <laughs> so so All at right. that point, the time. Please bring that letter. Very important for me to do what I have to this weekend. So obviously he's getting out. 
All right, so basically you want me to look at these texts and glean what? Because what I gleaned was that you agreed to pay him the other 5K. If, uh, when the app is actually completed, it's exactly what I say, at the launch of the application, which well, I never Well, what's even... missing for the launch? Just you? No, not just me. I don't literally, know. Literally. Yeah, well, if his work is done, then it's just you don't feel like launching it. How do you get to save yourself 5K that you committed to paying? Well, the fact of the matter is his work is not done. I don't know what the application does. And to be quite honest with you, it, the whole point of the project was him to get some money to get out of my home. So are you not wanting to pay him the Your remaining Honor, amount? I'm I'll, sorry. I'll I'm be in the quite middle honest with you. I'm in the What's middle that? of a question. Yeah. Are you not wanting to pay him the remaining amount because you guys got into a fight? Is that what it is? Because that's the only thing I can see that's different. I didn't want to pay him the remaining amount because I don't have an application. And if I pay him, I'm going to be begging for this application, begging for its terms. I'm sorry, what, its... what is left for the application? The application is actually done. I actually have billing statements from the third party platform stating that he's still paying for the, the service to be rendered. So again, it's up to him. If he wants to use the app, it's up to him. It's out of have my Have you hands. given him passcodes or he whatever it is? He has passwords. He has all of that. Like, literally, he needed that to put a credit card down to make that payment. And Did all of that has been done. Did he give you the password? Done. I don't have any password. I don't know what the Did app even does, you Your Honor. No, password. I don't have I See, don't. let me tell you what your answer to the complaint is filled of mm. with and what your testimony today mm. is filled with. Things like, Actually, I don't have a password. I don't know the password, so no. No, nope. if he gave me the password, it's your fault you don't know the password. Uh, I, di I, don't, I didn't launch the app, so I don't have to pay 50% of what I agree. You're, well, no, if you don't launch the app, it's on you that Honor, you didn't I launch I can't the app. launch an app. I, I don't have the means to do so. Why That's not? up to him. I don't know how to launch an app. He's coming up with an application. I don't even know what it does. Well, why don't you find out? Uh, all I wanted for him was to get well, out of my home and have the money. That's to get very out of nice, it. but you can't pretend that you don't have an agreement with him. I did not create the situation you did. I did. You wanted him not to go to Boston. You wanted to tap into his big brain. You wanted, you thought this was a good deal for you, mm -hmm. and now it turns out not to be. What did you think was going to happen when you come to court? And there's all kinds of evidence that you agree to pay a certain amount. This is a conversation between me and him so I could, so I could give him the money for something that he never completed, as far as I know. I don't have any application. I don't statement? have a launch. All right, give him the password. You got the password on you? I, I don't have it on me, but I will email it again. Now, I have a question for you. It, when you give him the password, what happens next? Because you're the app guy, I'm not. What happens next? Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So can this dude say, well, we're square because you lived in my house for free? No, he can't. That's not, that's not right. It's two different legal actions there. You know, he owes him some money and he's living free in his house. He's still got to pay. That sounds pretty compelling. What do you say? I don't know. Did he sign a contract? No contract. Mm. About the house, for sure. Well, I don't know. That's Why don't you? I would go with what he's saying. What do you say? So, no. I would say yes. Yes? Really? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Going inside the courtroom. Literally, he has to what? enter, literally, just enter iPod or I, Apple information. So, his oh, is that too much for you? I mean, what his, is that? What was that? Because that just makes me more suspicious of your testimony. Just stop and don't move. Go I don't ahead. have any of his personal information with any Apple account that he has. So all he has to do is enter that information so it appears on the Apple store and people are able to download That's it. it. That's and it. then it's on the Apple store. That's all he's got to do. Clean. That's, that's what launch means. The last it. minutes, the last seconds before the launch are all in his possession. That's it. All he needs is the password from you. You're no, awesome. I already gave it to him. I'll resend no, it. No, you cannot. And what's this layaway? You're suing for a layaway on some jewelry? Correct. I, um, during the whole $10,000 agreement, I assumed that I would be getting the money and I would be able to afford a piece of jewelry. I uh, wore a pendant out of the showcase. Uh, returned it, it was damaged, I paid for the damage and paid for that actual pendant. I would like that back, I don't want that pendant. But yeah, but you don't get to back out of that, that's a contract too. Um, I think what happened is this, I think that everything would have been fine if there had, if you had felt more gratitude. You felt like you were giving the guy a home for six months and that he c kinda had a testy attitude. And I see it, you know, but this is what you bought. That's the package you bought. You saw in him an edge and talent, and that's why you gave him a home for six months. And now you're complaining about it. You didn't give him a home to be your puppy. You gave him a home because you wanted him to do the work for you, and then you guys end up in this big tiff, and, then, and now nobody wants to pay him for contracts. I'm a contracts person. Let me tell you what the contract was on the rent. Bupkis. That is your contract that you struck with him. Pay me nothing. 
because I want to keep you here. Okay, well, that was your deal and you got your deal, all right? Then the contract on the other stuff is the remaining money. So I, you know, it's very simple, okay? If you tell somebody, if you do this, I'll pay you, and the person does it, you got to pay them. And I am ordering you to pay the remaining $1,650 upon your giving the password to him again. Not a problem. Okay, all right, that's my verdict. Good luck, folks. Thank you. So the plaintiff in the end does does prevail. You understand, you know, it's contract. That's, yeah, I understand yeah, you, that. You, I mean, I don't think this application will ever happen. Let me ask you a question. You keep referring to the, what, what is it for, designed it's to for do? It's for him to get out of my house. No, I that's know, but I mean, for. it's an app. But what's yeah. it going to do? Do what's you know? It? I have no you idea. You don't seem to know. I don't know. You don't have a clue what it does? I invited a person in my home. Big mistake. Never do that if you're at home. Well, look, keep, you did that. You did I that did. on your own. I okay. Did. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe you can tell me. Here comes Mr. I'm Albert. Maybe you can tell me what the app is designed to do. The app is actually to entertain this consumer. Play music, look at all the fancy jewelry he recently designed, all the videos he's uploading on YouTube. It all feeds into the app directly. Is it like a catalog of jewelry he has for sale, maybe? That too. Something that like too, that. That too. It's actually... All, like a newsletter, a blog, or, or a See, blog. He doesn't understand that. He doesn't know what it's for. Oh, he wants to play ignorant. That's what happens. Well, look, you won. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're Thank living. You. Okay now? I'm blessed. You you, I'm blessed. you mentioned you were down and out in Havana? Did nah, I hear that? No, nah, I went to Cuba and returned to no job. So now okay. I'm back. I'm on my feet. All right. Well, blessed. congratulations. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay. Very good. Harvey? Okay, Doug, well, the plaintiff ended up giving the defendant the password, so the case is closed, end of story. And that will do it for this case, litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. These are the plaintiffs, Audrey Galati and Nicholas Galati Zawaski. Nicholas says the defendant was carelessly driving down the street, crossed over the yellow line, and crashed into his car. The guy immediately said it was his fault, begged him, don't call the insurance company, and he thought he would be nice and just exchange information with the guy because he said he would pay. He's learned a very valuable lesson because the defendant won't pay up, and he now has to come to court and sue for the $1,717.36 they're owed. This is the defendant, Kevin Lipsitz. He says it was a snowy day, and he was driving one way, and the plaintiff was driving the other way on a two-lane road. The plaintiff's car was fishtailing as he was coming towards him. He lost control of his car, and the guy crashed into him. He told him to go through the insurance company. He did, and now the guy's suing him for an accident that wasn't his fault to begin with? Hardy har har He's accused of smashing it up. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiffs say the defendant was driving recklessly and crashed into their car and won't pay for the damage, even though the defendant confessed. But the defendant says, not his fault. It's the case of hit and don't tell. Okay, Galati, Zahowski. Nicholas Galati, Zahowski, and Audrey Galati. It's the car's in your name, he is your? Son. Okay, and you were driving. All right, you're suing Kevin Lipsitz for $1,717.36 for repairs done to your car because according to you, he damaged your car. Yes, ma'am. All right, I want you to come up and explain how you say the accident happened up here. When you look at this, can you kind of get your bearings? This is his house? I have no idea. Uh, Count on you guys. Does that sound right? Is your house like right by Larison Loop? Yes. Okay, yes. All right, okay. so yeah, so driveway, driveway would be the driveway is. Okay. Right. My car coming here. How many lanes are on Sunset Avenue? One going each way. There's four lanes, but two are parking. So two, two for yeah, traffic. Yeah, one each way. Got it for traffic. So what do you say happens? Uh, Your Honor, he pulled out of his driveway. And, and you were traveling on Sunset? I was, yes. Okay. And? And he hit into the side of me. Exactly like that? Like that. Perfectly like that, yes. Okay. He was making a right and hit me. He was making a, uh, uh, he was trying to get into the lane that you were in in order to go, right? No, no, he had, he never had to come to my Was he heading forward or backward? Forward. Oh, so he, yeah, just, he just like that. exaggerated the right? Yep, yeah, just over, crashed right into me, So yeah. according to you, what he did was he over, overshot the right. 
turn that he was yeah, making. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was, I don't know why. Yeah, he went well, right I mean, into my lane. There, it looks like he's gunning for you. Um, <laughs> show me the damage yeah. to your car and to his car. Are you positive that's where the hit The damage was? to his car was right there. Okay. And the damage to my car was here. So, just like that. Yeah. All right. Um, and this lane is oncoming. It's opposite to you. Yes, yes. It's not two lanes that are the same direction. No, no. No. It, okay. Go ahead and go back. Come on over here. Sorry. That was close. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just left it at that. Yeah. <laughs> All okay. right. All right, so I'll be the blue car? Yeah. Okay. So what's going on? All right. All right, there was, uh, as you'll see from the photos that I brought, it was icy and snowing. Okay. Uh, that day. Okay. The point of impact was right... That's a parked car. Exactly, exactly. And there's two lanes here. This lane and this lane. Right, and they're going in opposite direction. Correct. All right, so I came out here, mm -hmm. and it was very, very icy and snowy. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just basically coasting with my brake. Got up to, I, at this point, right about here, mm -hmm. I saw him. And I know from past experience, it's very easy. As you go up the hill, if, if you don't have enough momentum and you... Um, spin your wheels, you, you can tend to fishtail this way or this way. So yeah, I saw him coming towards me, so at that point I slowed down and came to a stop right about here, and at this point he was still over here, and I saw him coming towards me, but there was absolutely nothing I could do because, as you'll see from the photos, there's only a few inches from here to here. Well, the photos here. are you staging the accident the way you say it happened, right? Yes, but there are also some right. original photos from okay. the road conditions. That's what I want to see, but right. so how do you say the accident happened? Right here. And if, if when you see here, it was so. According to you, the damage to his car is right in right front. Right about, of, right about there. Okay. It, it wasn't head on the side, like he said, because his whole fr whole side of his car would be taken out. His damage was from about three or four inches back from the front bumper to his his wheel right in here. Did and you call car, the police? Actually, at that time, um, we both made a decision together not to do it. And I learned afterwards when I looked at the documents why that why his side was. Why, why didn't you call the police? Um, it, to, it, to me, it seemed like a minor amount of damage. I know from his perspective, the reason he didn't want to do it, I learned afterwards when I looked at the documents, everything was expired. The insurance and the registration. Was your insurance and registration? That's the stuff, what he presented. Hold on. Hold on. Was your insurance and registration expired? No. Where did you get that from? I'll show you the documents that he gave me. The documents that who gave you? He presented to me. We, we switched, we exchanged. Um, While you're standing there, if you don't see a, a valid registration, why do you then not call the police? <laughs> why would you, why would that be your I, moment? To, I honestly would have. Can I because ask you guys a question? According to you, you want to go, back? go ahead and go back, sorry. Um, what does he say? When you guys get out of the car, does he say, oh my gosh, I lost control? What, what happened there? Um, he suggested that we might want to do it directly, you know, directly instead of through the insurance. And I said, you know, let's see what the estimates come Did out. Did he at. say anything about whose fault it was? Uh, well, he was he was blaming me at the time, and I rather than get into a confrontation, when a physical confrontation, I just kept quiet. Well, it doesn't have to get physical. I mean, okay, all right. Now, um, and why didn't you call the police, according to you? Uh, well, Your Honor, when I got out of the car, he it was his house. He said, I'm so sorry. Obviously, I came out of my driveway, and I couldn't stop, and I hit you. So it's 100% my fault. But Those words he said to you? Yes. Um, he said... Uh, and you deny having said that to him? Yes. He then said, um, my insurance is going to go up. I can't afford that. Can we please, please, please work this out some other way? So I said... I How said, old are you? 24. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I said, listen, I'll go right now and get an estimate. I said, I'll call you up, um, give me your phone number. He ran into his house, he got a pen and paper, we exchanged information, and I went right then and got him an estimate. I uh, called him, he didn't answer. He called me back on an unknown number uh, and said, oh, that's much too much money. Um, well, obviously have to go to the insurance company. I said, oh, okay, and he hung up on me. Okay, now when you go through the insurance, what you find out is that he is giving the insurance company the story he's giving me today, the version he's giving me today, and the insurance company denies your claim and says it's, you know, that's your fault. Well, I received a letter from his insurance company saying that I was changing lanes. I, changing I, lanes where? It's oncoming traffic. Where is he changing lanes to? So, if this dude confesses at the accident scene, is it end of story or can you have a full trial and maybe can he win in court? 
I don't think it's the end of the story because it still happened. Like just because he admitted to it, there's still going to be like repercussions for it. You buy that? That that the admission isn't the end of the story? Um, I think since he confessed, it should just be over with because he obviously did it if he confessed. Like, why would you lie? You're going to be the tiebreaker. I don't think it's the end of the story. Really? No, I don't. Okay, we're going inside the courtroom. Who's that boy, Ram? That is Julian Antoni. He and was he was passenger. in the car. Go ahead. Yeah, we were just, we were driving up the street up Sunset Avenue, and uh, we didn't see it. There was a car blocking his driveway, so we couldn't see the car pulling out. And stop in time? Yeah, before it yeah, would hit course. you. Okay. So we were just driving straight. We were probably, it was snowing that day. We were probably going about, to what, 10, 15 miles an hour. We were going slow. And he pulled out straight because I guess he had to make the wide turn because there was a parked car there in the, as you could see. And he. He doesn't have to make it that wide. <laughs> right? And he, um, and he hit right into the side of us. Okay. Um, did, did you oh, come the, out of the side, the front side of the car? Right. Let me see the pictures of the damage to your car. Let me see the pictures of the damage to your car. Did you witness any conversation between the two of them? Yeah. You yeah did? He did. He was very apologetic. He said that he understands that it's his fault and that he, he all he did was kept apologizing. Okay. Well, who's the blue car? You? My car, yes. Okay. And let me see your, the damage to your car. Right. Do you want to see the other photos that I have also of documents? You know, I don't want to see there. stage That's photos. I want to see the other photos that you have yes, of the so intersection. Okay. But really, okay. none of that's okay. going to tell me anything because it's all about the way the cars hit, you know? And it's kind of, which car is this? That's his car. That's his car. Okay, what is this document? This that's is where expired, you're getting- That's the expired stuff he presented to me. Okay, so- now, had, Honestly, had I noticed that was expired, New that York State registration, which expired 12-12-17, and the accident was when? December 30th. And then uh, New York State insurance identification card, and that insurance that you were carrying on you expired 12-9. So both of those things were expired. That's where he gets it from. Uh, when I get the new one, I put it over the old one. I stick it in the same folder. I so you might have pulled out the wrong ones? I gave him everything. I, he copied what he no, it was, I was well, why do, why do you keep the old ones? Why don't you just throw out the old ones and just, you know, when somebody asks you for the stuff, you should give them the new ones. All right, well, either way. Did your car get repaired? Yes, I had to fix it to go to work. Right, and uh, fixing it, who ended up paying for that? I had to. Okay. It, Your Honor, there's a clarification on the, um, that would probably help you understand the insurance. No, you know of, what? I, I don't need any more fancy insurance. The insu It's very simple. I've been doing yeah. this stuff a long time, okay? okay? I gotta decide which of you is lying. And I, I, you know, I'm sorry that I have to do that with that precious thing here, because I think you're lying. I have not, it's not a matter of numbers. It's not a numbers game, okay? It's not. But the insurance company only ruled in your favor because it's convenient for them to keep their money, <laughs> and they've got you talking about him changing lanes. That guy's not changing lanes. That's oncoming traffic. That's what that is. Okay, I know how the accident happened. You, brought, you came out of your driveway, there's a parked car, and you took too wide a turn. That's why I have two people talking about you apologizing. Verdict for the plaintiff in the amount of the $1,717.36. Well, the judge decided she had to come to a decision on who was telling the truth, and unfortunately, she found against you. So she found for the plaintiff, but doesn't think you were telling the truth. Obviously, you have something to say about that. Yeah, well, of course, it's very disappointing. Um, it just came down to one person against the other. Well, unfortunately, you lost. Yes. Not much. I do, I understand. Tell me, this has nothing to do with the case. Are you some kind of a pickle eating champion? Actually, yes, yes. I, I was the uh, international pickle eating champion, and um, at the time I dethroned Curtis Lewa, who was a radio personality in, in charge of the Guardian Angels. He had held the title for years. Yeah. And I dethroned him. By eating how many pickles? Well, it was it was two and a half pounds of pickles in five minutes, which doesn't <laughs> sound like a lot, but your jaw up, there were. Okay, Dad, you eat too many pickles. Way too many. Way too many. All right, thank you very much. Sorry you lost okay. the case. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's the way it goes. All okay. Right. All right. Here come the uh, the plaintiffs now. Well, you know the judge believe you. No, nothing else to say. You won the case. Yeah. Uh, okay. What he did was really but not a very nice. The thing. documents you had uh, that he had pictures of that were expired 
What were you just pulled out the wrong ones? You had the right ones, or you hadn't gotten the right ones? What I, was the I gave them all of them. I put the new ones in front of the old ones, and he just copied the old ones. I guess he saw it as an advantage and oh, tried okay. to play it. But you you were covered. Absolutely. And, yeah. Okay. Good enough. All right. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. That'll Thank do you. it. All right. You're welcome. You. Okay. Harvey. Doug, I'm going to tell you something that you folks should listen to because it's really important because people file insurance claims all the time. Just because an insurance company rules a certain way saying he was at fault or she was at fault, that is not binding, not binding on a judge if the case goes to court. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Josephine Villarreal Hill. She says she rented a two-bedroom apartment from the defendant for six years, and one day the pipe under her bathroom sink exploded and caused a big flood. The sneaky defendant's now trying to steal her security deposit due to damages. She has some nerve keeping her hard-earned money for damage she had no control over, and she's here in the name of justice, suing for every penny of the $1,200 she's most surely owed. This is the defendant, Lydia Carl. She says the plaintiff caused the flood, plain and simple. And that's why she's not getting her security back. That's right, she left the hot water running all night. And the flood not only damaged her apartment, it damaged the apartment underneath hers. There was no plumbing leak, no busted pipe, nothing. Too bad for the plaintiff. You do the crime, you pay the fine. She's accused of not returning money's owed. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff rented a two-bedroom from the defendant, a pipe burst, and now the defendant is charging her for the damage. But the defendant says the plaintiff caused the flood. It's the case of pipe down. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Villarreal Hill. Okay, you're suing Lydia Carl, your former landlord, for $1,200, the entire security deposit which you want returned to you which according to you, she has wrongfully attempted to withhold part of. Tell me what's going on. When I was supposed to get my security. How long did you live there? For, for four years. Four years. Almost five years. And then years. W there was some kind of flood? Yes. Tell me about the flood. October 14th, about 5.30, the, the person who was living with me, she got up to use and came out to the living room. When she came to the living room, she stepped in water. So right away, she called out to me, telling me, Pat, that's the name she usually called. There's a flood outside. Now, I came outside to see what was going on, because I couldn't understand where all this water was coming from. Now, as I entered the bathroom, there was no water coming from the faucet. So, but in the bathroom, you were hearing this noise like, a pressure cooker. Now as I look up, I saw the roof was wet, so I assume water was coming from the ceiling. Upstairs, from mean? the ceiling, yes. And what was bad about the ceiling? It was just wet, water was in the ceiling. So I'm thinking that maybe there was a leak coming from upstairs. I went back to the bedroom and immediately called the landlord, telling okay. her there's a leak upstairs. However, when her son came, the son came downstairs. When he checked, he told me that there was no leak upstairs. I said, well, where's the water coming from? Did, well, did he see the water in your apartment? Yes, there okay. was water in no, the apartment. No, did he see it? Did you show it to him? Did yes. you splash around and, okay. Yes, I, I showed him the water. But before he came Stop downstairs, <laughs> I, <laughs> I used the bathroom. Now, after using the bathroom, and I opened the faucet, I had to jump back. There was this noise from the faucet, and the filter fell out. Now, and what I observe is after that happened, the noise he was saying. What do you mean the filter fell out? You mean that the, little thing that in the faucet? That little thing okay. at the mouth of the faucet. <laughs> okay, and then now, were you able to turn off the water? Yes, the water could turn off because that, the tap had nothing to do with this filter. Oh, um, what do you call it? The filter that was at the end of the pipe. Now, after this happened, I turn off the faucet. And what I observe is that that noise you was hearing in the bathroom, that stopped, you know? When the sun came down, 
He keep looking. He said, there's no water coming from upstairs. So I said, where's the water coming from? But his observation was there was some little leak underneath the pipe. Now, when the landlord came, she said that oh, the only reason this could happen, the pipe had to, the faucet had to remain open. I have a question open. for you. Did you leave the faucet open with water running? No, I didn't. Because I, I assumed that would be noisy. Where did you, um, according to you, there's something she did to cause a flood? What did she do to cause a flood? I got a call 5.30 in the morning saying there was water coming from upstairs. I called the tenant upstairs, which is not my son, Mr. Nichols, and I said, could you check what is going on? The, the lady on the second floor said there's a leak. He looked upstairs and he said no water was leaking from upstairs. So I asked him, could you go down and check in her apartment to see what was happening? When he got down there, I still had him on the phone. He said the place was exceedingly hot. He said he didn't see water coming from anywhere. He looked in the tub. He looked in the, by the toilet. He looked in the sink. There was no water coming from anywhere. Well, how'd the water he get into her apartment? Because you're charging for water damage. You want to keep part of the security deposit because you acknowledge that there was water damage. I so said to her, and Mr. Nichols has um, given a statement, <clears throat> that somebody might have accidentally left the hot water on when they went to the bathroom during the night. And that's what caused the overflow. Says who? Be because. Says who that that happened? Says who? I need somebody who knows plumbing to say that she did that for you to be able to charge her a red cent of her deposit for it. I need proof. That's how we work in court. What proof do you have that that's how that happened? So if there's no proof that the tenant caused the damage, no proof, is the um, landlord responsible for all the damage? Yes. Because? I don't know. Because it's his place. Because it's his place. That kind of makes sense. What are you saying? I'd say that it's the landlord, yeah. Like, he should pay for it because there's no proof. So you can't just blame the person without having any proof that they were the one who broke the pipe. You know what? That kind of says it all. That was really good. Going inside the courtroom. Did you finally hire a licensed plumber to go in there? No, I didn't hire a licensed plumber. Did you hire plumber. a plumber to go in there? No, I didn't hire a plumber. So you hired nobody, and you just want to take a chunk of the damages out of the tenant because you've decided that it must be that she left the, the, the faucet running? Well, when Mr. Nichols went down there, which Who's is a Who's Mr. Nichols? He's a tenant from the- Exactly, is he a plumber? He's not a plumber. Okay. He well, didn't then see what any I, water. You're a plumber, right? He's a plumber. <laughs> I don't even know, who are you to her? <laughs> a friend. A friend, come I'm on up, plumber. plumber. <laughs> like, I need to hear this, switch places. You didn't actually see the, the apartment in question at the time, right? No. Okay. So what are you here to tell me? Oh, no, she just explained the problem to me and... It sounds like what? Nothing. Not the faucet. No. It couldn't be the faucet. It couldn't be no faucet. W what is it, do you think? It's a busted pipe in the wall. Or yeah, that, it's what it usually is. A busted pipe in the wall in an old <laughs> building. Yep. Who knew? Return this lady's money. $1,200 verdict for the plaintiff. There was no busted pipe. So the plaintiff prevails. She is going to get the rest of her security deposit back, $1,200. I heard you just say there was no busted pipe. That's correct. There was no busted pipe. Well, there where did no the water come from? I don't know. you got to ask them where the water come from. No. The evidence you, showed from the, the You the had to faucet. have some kind of proof. I mean, you know, did you ever get a, a plumber to look and decide where the, what, what the problem was? No, I didn't get a plumber to look because when we got there, there was no water anywhere. I turned on the faucet, I checked under the sink, there was no water leaking from anywhere. And hasn't been since. And hasn't been since. And this was a copy of the, the a picture of what the vanity looks like. Well, you and don't, you don't have to show me that out here. She I mean, the judge should have, have, should have seen that. asked to see that, but she didn't want to. Well, bottom line, you needed some evidence. The, you know your problem is? Problem you didn't call a plumber. You needed a plumber okay. and a plumber's testimony okay. to help you out. That's really what cooked okay. your goose. Sorry about that. That's all right. Okay. Thank You've you. learned a lesson. Yeah. All right. Here comes the plaintiff now. You're okay with this? I'm sure you are. Yeah. It was, I am. What was it? No. She had to change the faucet plus the speedy connector. So if there wasn't a problem with the line, why did she have to do that? Well, I don't know. 
<laughs> That's the question. You okay. should answer. Well, okay. you're going to get your psychiatry yeah, back. Yeah, I'm glad to do that. Yeah, thank, you. You. thank you. Okay, thank you. You really, you're a big help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're a plumber. Very good. All right. <laughs> Harvey? Okay, Doug, well, this is a case, there's something called the burden of proof, which if, if you watch the People's Court, you know what that is. It means that the person who, you, who sues usually has the duty to prove what more likely than not that something bad happened on the other side. In this case, the landlord has the burden of proof, and if he can't show the tenant did it, he's responsible. In this case, she's responsible. Don't text and drive. The People's Court is a Ralph Edwards, Stu Billet production.